Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with another Blender tutorial. This is a, uh, a tutorial on the film side of our film and music project. We're going to be looking at uh, creating planets today using a very, very simple camera projection technique. Uh, this is not going to require us to have um, equirectangular maps for planets in terms of our textures and materials. Uh, all we need are some uh, images of uh, sphere textures that are on real objects or that are already uh, wrapped around something within the image. So um, before I show you what I'm talking about, I just wanted to show you where we're at with the uh, project itself. I haven't been on here in a while uh, with a Blender tutorial because I've been working to get the um, the animation all put together and completed so that I can move ahead with some of the music side of it uh, uh, later on here. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is following up on how to put some of these scenes together that I'm going to show you, but this is essentially uh, what we have uh, going on with this film. Uh, we're going to be making a planet scene uh, much like what you see here. Uh, so you can see that there's a planet in there, there's some stars, we'll talk about that, uh, whether or not you want to have a star field and how you should utilize that. Uh, maybe we'll put uh, um, a light source in there uh, and a little bit of uh, atmospheric, some uh, space dust or whatever. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, planets in this uh, short. You can see here's a kind of a ringed planet, a very similar kind of process. Uh, we just add some rings and add some lights that will uh, cast shadow. Uh, we also have, let's see here, here's another planet, very simple one. Uh, and this is a, um, this is a, a Mars kind of planet. And I think that's pretty much it for planets. So we're going to look at how to make, here's one here, which is another kind of uh, Martian planet uh, on uh, the horizon of another planet. Uh, we're not going to talk specifically about this, but I'm going to show you how to make this background uh image here. Uh, in this case what we're looking at is actually a flat two-dimensional image in the background of a planet. We can create those using this technique as well. So uh, with that being said, let's get into it. And um, the first thing we're going to need to do is get rid of our default cube. And uh, we'll keep our light because we may we may use that. Um, and Let's see, what we're going to do is we're going to need to uh, get some images, some textures that we're going to use. So uh, some of the images might look like this. I have an image of a, a Mars over here. I have an image of a, a moon over here as well. And let's see, I've got, uh, let's see, what else do I have? An image of a melon, which might be useful. Uh, and those are really the only three that I used in this entire animation. So uh, you can think outside of the box. And let's, in fact, let's deal with the melon first. We're going to go to the top view. Uh, we're going to go to the top and align the active camera to view. And uh, what we need to do is we need to know what the resolution of that image is. So uh, let's go back to our folder here and uh, we'll open up our uh, melon image. Go to Properties, Image, and we're looking at 2213 by 1660. So 2213 by 1660, 2213 by 1660, I believe is what we had. Go back and check that. 2213 by 1660, okay, we're all set. And uh, what we want to do is we're going to set that image as a uh, as the background of our scene. Uh, before we do that, we'll turn on GLSL shading mode uh, because we're going to be rendering an OpenGL. We'll enable background images, and we're going to add uh, an image, and we'll select Open, and we'll navigate to our images. And uh, to look here, so we have this one here uh, titled Melon 1. So it's just a picture of a uh, some kind of cantaloupe or something like that. And uh, we'll open that up, and you can see we're going to borrow this sort of texture as uh, uh, part of our the surface of our planet here. Now what we want to do is we want to put a sphere into the uh, image here that will line up with our uh, melon. So we'll create uh, quickly an icosphere. We'll increase the subdivisions a couple times. Uh, we're going to tab uh, up here. Uh, we'll tab into edit mode in a second, but let's enable smooth shading. We're going to scale this up. And I want to put my image in the front, so I'm looking through my image to the objects in the background. 
uh, we can keep the opacity kind of low so we can see what's going on here. I want to scale up my image so that it, it roughly matches uh, the proportions of the melon. And I want to make sure that there's nothing hanging out anywhere. So we just want to get this as, to fill up as much space as possible so that we can get the best uh, uh, projection. And I think that'll do it right there. Uh, now what we want to do is we're going to tab into edit mode and we're going to come over here to shading UVs and we'll select under the unwrap, we're going to select project from view. Uh, and that should do it. So now we've unwrapped at least uh, uh, the vertices in a two-dimensional space to line up with our image here. We can turn off our uh, background image now. We don't need to see that anymore. And then we'll go over to the material uh, settings. We want to enable our uh, texture. Go over to the material settings. We'll hit new. Uh, and we'll increase the intensity. I just like to do this. I turn this all the way up to one. And then uh, come in here. We'll put in a texture. And for the texture, we're going to navigate to that picture of the melon. And if I do that, we can now see that we have it uh, mapped to it. Okay. Now let's see if we can get some of these, uh, some of this to look a little bit more appropriate. Right now, it looks just kind of like a shiny plastic ball with that texture printed on it. Um, first of all, let's come over here to our material settings, and we're going to decrease the intensity of the specularity a little bit. And uh, we're going to decrease the hardness. So we'll turn this actually down to maybe about 5, um, maybe 10. So it's okay to have a little bit of specularity in there, but not too much. Just a little bit of a, a very, very faint uh, essence of a shine. There's no water on this planet. It seems to be a dry kind of uh, planet. Uh, and then we're going to uh, enable some elements on the texture uh, to give us a little bit of relief to catch some shadows. We'll come down here, we'll click on geometry, and that'll take the shadowy parts of the geometry and, uh, and create kind of these cracks. Now, the cracks seem to be uh, going the opposite direction that we want them to. So if we hit negative one, we'll see that this will reverse itself. Uh, and I want to decrease the amount of influence that this has. So we're going to go to negative uh, 0 0.01. Take it way down. Uh, maybe we'll go up from there, negative 0 0.05. And that's about right. We can just start to see the very faint hint of uh, the edges out here. Okay. So uh, we can scale this down a little bit. Uh, and we might just say that that's it. That, that might be the planet. There might not be anything more to it. It is just a melon hanging in space, and that, that's what it's going to be. Let's assume that for right now. Uh, we will uh, use this light. Um, we'll be fine. We'll put this into the scene so we have a little bit of a shadow in there. And then we need to uh, put an object in the background. We need to be able to see a background to this. Okay. So let me see if we can uh, first fix our resolution. Go back to 1920 by... 1080 if we're going to do a 16 by 9 resolution. Then we're going to import an image as planes. <clears throat> this is an add-on you want to enable. We've used quite a bit. Go back to our space images and I'm going to grab um, now, oftentimes, uh, let, let me have this discussion with you here. When you're using, when you're doing planets, uh, you really don't want to have a lot in the background. However, if you are a good distance away from the planet, you can start to see things behind it. If you look at some NASA imagery um, of uh, you know planetary bodies, particularly ones looking back at Earth, oftentimes the background has no stars in it, uh, and that. That may be because the, uh, the light source of the planet, the reflection of the planet of Earth and those images, uh, just takes over in the, uh, um, uh, the, the light space of the cameras that they're, they're taking the images with. And you don't see these tiny little lights showing up in the back. It, it kind of pollutes out the ability to see those images. However, uh, if you back way up from the planet, you're taking a very distant shot from it, um, you would be able to see much more around it. So you want to be kind of sparing with uh, the amount of stars that you put in the background, but we're going to go kind of big uh, just for the, uh, the, uh, the benefits of this tutorial. I have a nebula over here that has quite a bit of a star field behind it. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select Shadeless and uh, import that, and we'll scale it up and move it back in uh, Z space. Way back there in the background, scale it up some more. And uh, we'll rotate this on the Z axis and just kind of find a, a 
place for it. And uh, we'll say that this is kind of a, a, a gaseous sort of uh, location. Uh, let's put another image kind of in front of everything here that has some uh, smoke to it. So we'll import another images planes. And uh, all of these images, by the way, uh, what I did is I downloaded these images that are, are, are free to uh, adjust and uh, amend and then use in commercial or personal projects. And for most of them, I took them into a, a photo editor and I made them seamless so that I could tile them if I wanted to. So I did that even with these nebula images in the background, these uh, NASA sort of images. Uh, let's see here. We want some smoke. So I'll take this one here. It's got, got kind of a higher resolution, larger smoke. We want it to be shadeless. And we're going to uh, pull this trick that we did before with our star field. We'll scale this up and uh, we'll go back to the camera view. We're going to jump over to the uh, game engine. And in the game engine, under this material, we're going to set the alpha mode to add. Uh, scale that up. Uh, I'm going to change the diffuse color underneath this to black. And we'll go to the uh, texture slot and we'll decrease the color just to kind of fade this down a little bit. So we just want a slight hint of, of smoke in our scene. Uh, then we'll come up here to our sh our display and we'll uh, enable uh, world background and only render. Uh, and if we select our camera, we'll make sure that everything's working right. So because our draw order is incorrect, uh, I'm going to grab this front image here that we just put in. And uh, I'll go over to its uh, object settings. And we will set it to, we can either set it to x-ray or transparency. I think we'll try transparency. Select the camera and we ought to be able to see through it now. So we'll go back to the camera view. And now we can see through. Um, I don't think we can see it very well. So we can do two things, one of two things. We could either increase uh, the, uh, uh, or decrease the transparency of this, or what we can do is we can sort of color grade our background image. Let's do that to darken up the scene a little bit. So I'll go back to my background image and I'm going to uh, go to the material settings and I'm going to click on the use nodes button over here. And we will open up the node editor. In the node editor, we'll select that material, Nebula 6. And then actually from here, we can uh, kind of grade this a little bit. We'll add in a color RGB curve. And uh, we'll just bring down the middles on here. We're not going to increase the contrast. We're just going to darken it up a little bit. Uh, and if it gets a little too dark on the stars, we could add a little bit of contrast in there to try to make the lighter colors pop out a little bit more. Uh, maybe it would be better if we took the high end over here. There we go. So we'll get a little bit darker, a little bit more definition on it. You don't want to go too far with this uh, because it, the, the bit depth is not very high in the OpenGL uh, material nodes. Okay, so that'll do it right there. Uh, let's uh, animate this a little bit. We'll go to our camera and uh, let's just push in and do a little bit of a rotation. Now, I've also found that you want to limit the amount of movement uh, that you do in these uh, sorts of planetary scenes because uh, you want to be sort of emulating the movement of something real. And, and real things would not zoom past a planet. That, that's not really, that would kind of disrupt the scale. Now you can do that, but you have to be very careful about the way you do it uh, and the way that the camera is moving. So we're going to go with a small move. Besides, we can't really go around our planet because if you remember, this is only projected from one side and we have a lot of stretching going on here in this uh, middle portion. So we'll find a way to get around that in a moment. If we come back here to the camera view, let's uh, take our camera and we'll make this um, uh, animation just 120 frames. Uh, I'm going to move my camera on the x-axis to the left a little bit uh, and I'll rotate on the y-axis to the right a little bit. We'll have to re resize our images a little bit. Insert a location rotation. I'll go to the end and we'll push in on the z-axis. And we'll move uh, on the x-axis to the left. And we'll rotate on the y-axis to the left. And we'll insert a keyframe, location rotation. We'll open up our graph editor. Hit V for vector. 
and we'll click on vector to make it a straight curve and we'll play back our animation and we can see just a very subtle movement with some of these atmospherics moving around so the the nebula clouds in the back uh, in addition to these this cloud figure in the front gives a, a much better three-dimensional space now this is a pretty bright scene and this is why we run into some trouble here um, uh, using just one light as what you would have in normal space scenes where you have one light source from a sun or something like that it seems like there's a lot more light in this uh, galaxy or in this area so what we're going to do is we're going to take our light source over here our lamp we'll duplicate it and we're going to slide it over here to the left and bring it down kind of in the opposite area actually we'll, we'll probably put two of them in here so we don't have any shadow spots uh, and we're going to change the color on this to kind of a blue hue and uh, we'll duplicate that we'll move that down we just want to get rid of all of the shadow here and we're going to decrease the energy down to 0 0.1 0 0.1 on both <clears throat> go back to our camera if we render one frame of this we'll see now we can see a little bit more around our our planet okay um, let's add a little bit of a lens flare to this in fact let's go back to our lamp our, our main lamp and let's increase the energy we'll, we'll really brighten it up here make it two and uh, we'll make this more of an orangish sort of sort of color and then let's let's add a light source way up here in the corner uh, just kind of outside of the frame so we'll go back to our uh, import images trick and we, we did this on the last tutorial we're gonna grab a lens flare grab this trusty one right here we want to make sure it's shadeless and we'll scale it up and we'll go over to the uh, Blender game engine and on the material blend mode we'll set it to add and then on the uh, object settings we'll set it to x-ray so it, sh it shines through everything else so now when we hit our camera we should see everything in the space that it belongs let's slide this back all the way back into this nebula it could actually be behind it would be fine come back to our camera view scale it up and then we can move this over here into the area that we want to have our light source and go back to the camera view uh, and the last thing we want to do is we're going to select our um, lens flare and we're going to add a constraint and we're going to put copy rotation and we want to copy the rotation of the camera so that way as the camera moves our lens flare will, will stay parallel with the camera movement so now when we watch back our animation everything uh, everything falls into place so now in addition to this we would want to do some uh, compositing um, we could render this out as a uh, oversampled beauty pass and then bring that in and do some what I call a poor man's motion blur um, or you could uh, do another form of motion blur that I address on my channel so if you go to my channel and search the videos for uh, motion blur you'll find a couple of ideas there I'm not going to get into that right now I'm just going to spend some time on how we set up these scenes in space uh, within the viewport and then render them out so we'd render them out with our uh, open GL buttons render that out that in animation and then we can uh, bring that into the video sequence editor to do some uh, color grading and some correction and some other effects add some glow and, and whatever we want uh, maybe we want to have some uh, flashing or defocus or, or, or some ideas like that we'll look at those in the future now very quickly I just want to address this problem that we have here with the um, uh, mapping of our texture you can see that as the camera moves around the texture is starting to show up as being stretched on the side so what you can do if we're going to be just kind of quick and dirty about this is if you select the uh, icosphere and go to your furthest frame where you can see the most stretching on the light side of it and then rotate uh, the uh, object uh, towards the stretching until you only barely see it going on there at the very last frame 
So now what we have is the stretching could be seen on this side, but it's hidden away in the uh, shadowy part of it. So, you know, it's there if you really wanted to look for it, but in general, we're not going to see it. And the, the idea here is that uh, you can only see one side of a planet at a time, and typically in these kinds of animations, you would not be revolving around a planet. You would just be going by it and just looking at one part of it. If you were doing this scene where you had nothing in the background, it was just a black space in the background, you would not need to light the shadow side of it. Uh, you could leave it black, in which case you could put all of the stretching on that side just outside of the space of the shadow and then you could revolve around the planet a considerable amount. You'd have one hemisphere uh, in which to revolve around where you would see um, the uh, textures that are not in shadow, uh, if that makes sense. So anyway, this is one way to put the scene together. Uh, let's look at a couple of other possibilities here. Let's get rid of uh, a few of these things. In fact, we're not going to get rid of them. We're just going to turn them off so we're not seeing them, including these two lamps that we made. Uh, let's make our background color black. Uh, and this is really what a planet would look like. If you were taking an actual image, this, is, this would be the less stylized version of it. You would see one light source of sun, and then you would see a shadow, much like what we look at when we see the moon. Um, you could take just uh, one rendered image of this and you could use this as an overlay uh, on other uh, projects. Say put this in the background as a card and then put a foreground kind of ground scene that's in three dimensions and, and, and we saw a scene like that in the video that I showed you. Uh, so that's one idea. I'm not even going to do it. I'm just going to mention that you can do that. Um, but let's try something else here. We're going to increase the movement of our uh, camera move. Uh, we'll go to that last frame here real quick. We're going to move in on Z space quite a bit more move over on X space and rotate on Y space so we're revolving much more around the uh, planet insert location rotation if we go back we'll see that this move is much more pronounced now and we're coming around to a point where we can see at the very end uh, the stretching going on so again what you do is you can just rotate the stretched part into the shadow. So just beyond the shadow there is the stretched area of the texture and you'll never see that because it sits outside of our view. So we'll rotate that back. Maybe even rotate up on the x-axis to get some of this stuff taken care of on the top. So now when we rotate around we never see any stretching because we're only looking at a very very small portion of our planet. Um, this reminds me of a, a, a story I've got for you from when I was younger. I, I noticed one day my dad was um, replacing a hubcap that he had lost on his vehicle. So he bought some cheap replacement plastic hubcaps at the store. And he took off the one hubcap on the one side that was remaining and he put two of the new ones on that side. But he didn't replace the hubcaps on the other side. And I, I kind of laughed at that. I said, you've got two different hubcaps on this vehicle. You've got two of one kind on one side and two of a very different kind on the other side. And I said, doesn't that look kind of silly? And my dad said, no, it doesn't, because you can never look at more than one side of the car at one time. And by the time you look at the other side of the car, you don't really remember the hubcaps on the first side of the car. And I thought about that, and he was right. Uh, you know, he drove around with that car for years like that because there was really no, you know, there was no way that you can see all of it all at the same time. And we're kind of dealing with the same thing here. Oftentimes when you're texturing and, and, and putting materials on your objects in a scene, you can use the camera projection in this manner because you don't typically go all the way around objects. Sometimes you can just apply a projection on one portion of it and use that very quick and dirty way of texturing it. Uh, and it looks like a full sphere projection. I mean, it really is. That's what it originally came from. Um, I want to show you one more thing here before we're done and that you can layer up these textures a little bit. So let's do this. We're going to uh, add another texture to this. What I want to do is add another image. Uh, we need to go back to our folder. And uh, let's use uh, the Mars image right here. And I don't need to see the uh, properties on this image. It is going to be 480 by 480. So we can remember that. We want to set our camera to 480 by 480. And uh, we're going to scale up. Now, I'm in the middle of an animation here, so I don't want to move my camera and I don't want to hit play. I'm going to scale up my planet. And we're going to enable a background image. 
we will get rid of the image that we had in there of the melon. We're going to open up our image of Mars. This one right here. And uh, we're going to set it to front so we're looking through it again. I'm going to take my uh, melon here and I'm going to move it so that's kind of in place. Now, the melon image did not have a shadow on it that was very pronounced, but the Mars image does. It has a very pronounced shadow on the one side of it. So all I need to do is that I need to remember that when I add this, that I want to move my light source so that it's matching the shadow of the Mars image, and then I can kind of hide that away. Um, now what I need to do is I need to project this on again, but I'm looking at it from a different angle and a different view. So what I need to do is I need to come over here to um, the, oh, what would this be, the, the uh, uh, there's a data entry over here. I, the, the, what it is escapes me. It's an object data uh, tab. And then I, what I want to come down, what I do, what I want to do is come down here and add another UV map. So this is the original UV map that we started with. I want to hit the plus sign and add a secondary one. Then I want to select that one uh, for render. And make sure I have it selected. Then I'm going to tab into edit mode. And then from this point, uh, let me slide this over. Make sure that I'm well within the bounds of my image. From this point now I want to come over to my unwrap and then I'll hit uh, project from view. So now if I tab back out uh, you can see my melon texture is all messed up. Let me turn this off here for a second. Uh, and the reason why it's messed up is because I'm rendering the other UV map that I just created and it's applying the original image on that new UV map. So if I go back to my texture settings here and I enable the render for the original UV map, now it will show the original one. Okay. So here's what I do. I go to my material slot for the melon and then I go to my texture slot. I'm going to add a new texture and the new texture will be the Mars texture. So if I navigate to that and I select it, now we can see that I have uh, two textures mapped onto it. Now they kind of line up a little bit, but they're not exactly right uh, because my new one is not using the proper UV map. So if I come down here to UV and I select UV map 1, now it will be, it will be mapped perfectly the way I uh, camera projected it from. And these things will line up right. So now what I can do is I can mix. You can see that I have the geometry of the original uh, image in there. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to keep that, um, but I'm going to kind of crossfade these images together. So on my new uh, texture, I'm going to set the color back to 0 0.5. So I'm kind of blending. In fact, I want it to be higher. Turn it up to 0 0.8. That's good, 0 0.8. And then I'm going to enable the geometry. I'm going to set this geometry, uh, let's try a negative number as well, negative 0 0.05. And now we have uh, both types of geometry together. In fact, I might go a little bit bigger, 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1. See what that does. Maybe I want to go the other way, 0 0.1. Eh, it's negligible. Which one is better? Maybe we'll keep it on the positive side. Let's increase it 0 0.2. That sticks out a little bit more. I might increase my color, sort of cover up the other part. So you want to play around with these settings. It does have a little bit more of a plastic feel to it now that I've put some uh, uh, relief on it. So I might go back to my material settings and uh, turn back the intensity on the specularity a little bit. And I think I want to turn down my uh, geometry influence now, 0 0.05. And then we'll go to the uh, first texture and do the same. We'll turn that back a little bit. So there's a new planet.
Okay, we're mixing together a few different textures. Uh, now I can, you know, mix and match these things and, and create new planets. Uh, I could add as many textures as I want. I can use just the geometry of textures, uh, or I could use uh, uh, the colors of these textures put together. I could take this into the uh, node editor and kind of tweak the colors as well. So uh, this is a way to make some planets uh, in your, your animations. And again, from here, I could render out uh, just one frame of this and use it as a background card in the scene. So uh, that's a way to make some planets and um, uh, a way to composite them in in 3D space. Uh, and then you can uh, render out from there and, and sequence it in the video sequencer or run it through whatever kind of compositor you want to uh, polish off your scene. So planets, uh, doing some cheap, uh, quick and dirty, easy uh, camera projection to create planets using two-dimensional images. So uh, I have a few of those kinds of scenes in my film, and uh, we'll take a look at some other things uh, on the next tutorial. We'll look into some nebula uh, and uh, maybe a little bit of compositing. So... Well, that's all for now. I wish you the best of luck with this idea and happy blending.